Hey there, John Chorby here from ReallyEasyGuitarLessons.com and in this video lesson I'm going to teach you the really easy strummy version of Zombie by the Cranberry. So this is a great beginner guitar player song, great song in general. I know my kid is obsessed with it. Um, and it's great for beginners because there's only four chords in the whole song. There's really only one chord progression in the whole song. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of different options of what chords to play on it. Believe it or not, the album uh, version, the recorded version, has the simplest chord progression, but if you are, you know, playing solo acoustic, sometimes some of those chords could sound a little drowning, so I'm gonna give you some options um, to play around with. So how we're gonna go about this, I'm gonna show you what chords are in the song, I'm gonna show you what the chord progressions are in the song, then we're gonna add the strumming and put everything together. Let's get started. All right, let's start with the chords using the song. Like I said earlier, there's only four of them, and I'm gonna give you a couple of different options to choose from. So for E minor, our basic standard way of doing E minor would be fretting the second fret of the A and the D string, and then playing everything else open. That's pretty much, you know, the way you're gonna go about it. If you are on the really super beginner side of stuff, you could play that as just the G, B, and E string. This is what I would call a, a, a stupid simple chord, where you're playing it just on the, the top three strings. But I think for most of us, this E minor is pretty easy to handle. It's not that's that hard. Um, and especially when you add the other chords to the context, um, the stupid simple version might not make a lot of sense because it's not gonna be as full as the other ones. All right, the next chord is a C. And with the C, you know, the standard C shape is like this, third fret of the A string, second fret of the D string, open G, first fret B, high E open, don't play the low E. A perfectly acceptable chord. However, I believe that the Cranberries are not really playing a C, but a C major seven, which is essentially the exact same thing as a C, except the B string is not fretted, it's played open. And when you play a C major seven, it might make more sense to use these two fingers, the middle on the A string and the first finger on the D string. And you're simply playing from the a string down. So and that is easier because, you know, to go from an E minor to a C, you know, that's a pretty demanding change for, for a newbie. But going from an E minor to a C major seven, you know, that's a, that's a lot easier. Now you could do a stupid simple chord where you do the C as open G, first fret B, open E. So you do an E minor here and a C here. Or you could do E minor here and a C here, or you could do E minor here and a C major seven. The next one is a G, which you can, a lot of ways you could do a G. There's that way, there's this way with the B string open. Some guys will, like in the country realm, will play a, a G like that. For this song, on the recorded version, the G is actually more of what's called a G6, which is really just, you take your G chord and you get rid of the B and the E string. So those, both the B and the E are open. So you can play the G this way, or you can play, you know, one of your standard versions of the G, or stupid simple version of G. You would have the open G string, B string, high E string. G6, G, stupid simple. And then the last chord, it's a D, but this D is kind of special because if you played a, a regular D chord in this progression, and when I play the progression and I, and I demonstrate it, you're gonna hear that a normal D chord will not sound super accurate simply because the lowest note of this D chord is the open D string. And we don't want that to be the lowest note. We want this F sharp on the low E string to be the lowest note. So two options that you could do here. One would be a D over F sharp, which is the first finger goes on the low E string second fret, the middle finger goes on the G string, second fret, and the ring finger goes on the B string, third fret. And when you play this chord, you, you want your first finger 
to touch the A string and mute it out, all right? So we don't hear anything from that A string, all right? Now, this is gonna be where doing a stupid simple version of all the chords, um, where it's gonna be a problem because that, that note is so integral to the sound of the song um, and you can't really do it on the, the top three strings. So while I gave you a couple stupid simple chords, um, I'm gonna recommend you avoid them and just do kind of like these big boy versions because they're not gonna be that hard. So with this D over F sharp, a way that you can make this both simpler and more accurate to the recording is just fret the low E string with your first finger. Again, mute out that A string and you can play the rest of the strings open, right? So technically, this chord has a weird name. I believe it would be called E minor, wait, it'd be E minor, add 11 over F sharp, I think. Don't worry about that, right? We're just gonna call it a D over F sharp for now. And know that we can play this two ways. Really easy way, one finger on the second fret of the E string, A string muted, everything else open. Or if you want a little bit of a more fuller sound, you could do this traditional D over F sharp, okay? So here, here's a couple ways you could do it. The, the progression is E minor, C, G, D over F sharp. The recording accurate way would be E minor and then C major seven, G six, and then this E minor add 11 over F sharp, which I'm calling just D over F sharp. E minor, C major seven, G six, D over F sharp. All right, that is the, the chords that you're gonna hear on the recorded version. It's perfectly acceptable to do either the G as a full chord and then do that last chord as a traditional G over F sharp. I think especially if you're playing solo acoustic and singing along with it. Those last two chords, while they're accurate to the song, they could be kind of annoying when you're playing it, you know, as a solo acoustic version. And I think playing the, the G and the D over the F sharp give it a little more weight when there's no other instrumentation holding down the fort. All right? And so the main chord progression is gonna be E minor for one bar, four beats, C for one bar, G for one bar, D over F sharp for one bar. All right, so it'd be one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So the first thing that you wanna do is decide what chords you're gonna play, right? So if you're gonna do the C major, practice that. If you're gonna do a full G or the G6, decide what you're gonna do. If you're gonna do the accurate one finger chord for that D over F sharp, then decide that. Or if you're gonna do the D over F sharp, you know, just make a decision which ones you're gonna do so that when you're practicing it, you're not practicing a bunch of different versions and not, you know, um, you know, not getting it actually, you know, learned and, and, and correct, or at least correct the way that you want to play it. If you're jumping around, you have more opportunity for, you know, making mistakes and, and being silly. So that chord progression is what I would call the main chord progression. And it's pretty much the entire song, right? The, the intro, the verse, the choruses, they're all just that chord progression played over and over. There is one little deviation, two little deviations rather, before the guitar solo starts, when it's really just the bass, what happens is we're just gonna go from the E minor to the C, one bar of E minor and one bar of C. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we're just gonna repeat that in the pre-solo section, you repeat it one, two, three, and four times. So four groups of that E minor and C. And then in the outro, you're gonna do it three times where we just end on the E minor, okay? 
So very basic, one chord progression for the majority of the song, two little sections where instead of doing the chord progression, you're just flipping between an E minor and an E minor and a C. That's the pre-solo where you do it four times. And then on the outro where you do it three times, really you do it four times. It's just that fourth time you're just stopping on the E minor and the song is over. So now let's talk about strumming. Strumming, you could keep it really simple if you want to. If you want to go as basic as you can go, you can just do straight eighth notes with all down strums. If you're gonna do straight eighth notes with all down strums, the one thing I would recommend would be to accent beats two and four. So when you're strumming eighth notes, if you're on the E minor, right, it'd be eight total strums, one and two and three and four and. And so what I'm suggesting is make beats two and four just a little more louder, add more emphasis to it, one and two and three and four and, and then as you change chords, one So the way I'm doing that, I'm not really strumming the whole chord. I'm just strumming the low strings of the chord and where I accent, then I play the whole chord. And if you do different chords, if you do different chords, you're applying the same strumming pattern no matter what version of the chords that you are doing. One other option um, for the strumming pattern that you could do would be kind of what is like the in intro rhythm. If you listen to the song, the, the rhythm pattern sounds a little more like this. And that's a pattern of down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 get down, 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 get down, get down. All right, so one big thing with this pattern is you got to make sure that your hand's not getting stuck up here. Very commonly, when you're, when you're strumming, right, your hand's always moving. It's just sometimes you hit the strings, sometimes you don't hit the strings. And what happens on, like when you have to whiff on a downstroke, right, so you're doing down, 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 up. On this up, which would be on the, it, right before you go to beat three, so you're supposed to whiff on beat three. You're supposed to just have your hand come down and not hit the strings. But what happens often is that students' hands get froze up here and they don't just complete the motion downward. So you have to be aware of that. Your hand should just be always moving. Your arm should always be moving up and down. Just sometimes you hit the string, sometimes you don't. And when you don't, you just are doing what I call a ghost drum. You're just whiffing on it. So once again, that's down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, down. And you could use that rhythm as is throughout the entirety of the song, or if you want to mix and match, maybe for the intro, you play that rhythm I just showed you. And then for like the choruses, when it's a little more, you know, the dynamics are a little bit higher, you can move to doing straight eighth notes and strumming the full chord to just kind of lift 
you know, the, dyna the dynamic floor from that. So here, let me give you, give you an example, right? You could take a verse and go nice and slow with that, you know, nice, pretty rhythm pattern. Not nice and slow, I'm sorry. Nice and soft is what I meant to say. And then when the chorus kicks in, you could... Switch it to straight eighth notes, and even as an option, maybe you play one version of the chords for a verse and another version of the chords for a chorus, just to kind of keep it interesting and have, you know, a, a little bit of differential in terms of what the sounds are for a verse as opposed to a chorus. Because if you're playing the same chords with the same rhythm for the entirety of the song, that's not as interesting as if you just make these little subtle variations. It could, you know, um, just open things up and again, make it sound a little more interesting. So that's it for this one. Again, with all strummy songs that you learn, process is the same. Learn the chords first. With this one, I gave you a couple options. So to choose which, you know, which chords you want to do and when you want to do them. Then after you have the, an understanding of the chords, you know, practice any chord changes in isolation. These are all basic and not that physically demanding. But if you encounter any problems, you know, if going from an E minor to a full C or from a G to the D over F sharp is uncomfortable for you or you're slow at it, you want to take that change and practice that in isolation on repeat. Then, you know, put the chord progression, put the chord progression in order. It's the same, again, the same chord progression for the entirety of the song, with the exception of the pre-solo and outro part, and then decide what strumming pattern you want to use and how you want to use it when you implement strumming with chord changing. You want to make sure that you don't have the gap of doom. This long... pause between chord changes. You don't want that. I would rather you sacrifice a little bit of chord quality for synchronization. If your chord changes don't sound good, that's the red flag that you need to practice them in isolation. And of course, if you want to take this up into different levels, you know, level one would be playing by yourself. No accompaniment, no backing track, no metronome, no nothing. You're just strumming and playing. That's, you know, perfectly fine, totally cool. That would be like level one, right? Level two would be, all right, now you're playing to the song or you're playing to a metronome. Level three would be you're playing to a backing track where there's no guitar. And then level four, be playing with other people and interacting and having fun or even performing. So those are all the different ways you could work your way through it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for so much for watching and I'll see you next time.